breaking news today on a double royal health crisis. Buckingham Palace announcing that King Charles, our new monarch, will undergo surgery for an enlarged prostate next week, postponing all his public engagements, while Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has already undergone abdominal surgery yesterday. The princess hasn't been seen in public since Christmas. She'll now remain in hospital for up to two weeks, we're told, and has cancelled all public duties until at least Easter in April. Well, joining me to discuss all this is Talk TV's royal editor, Sarah Houston, who's in London. And in the studio with me here in New York is Fox News contributor, Dr Mark Siegel. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Sarah, you. Sarah, let's get to the, the royal story aspect of this. I can't remember the last time there were two mm. announcements like this back to back, um, both supposedly for planned procedures, but it all seemed a bit rushed out to me. What's your take on this? Yeah, and I suppose it depends what they mean by planned, uh, doesn't it, Piers? We're told that the Princess of Wales wasn't rushed into hospital. This isn't something that occurred over the course of the weekend and has then uh, led to her being hospitalised this week, but we don't know for how long it has been planned. In the King's case, he started to uh, feel symptoms. He then saw a doctor earlier on this week and he received his diagnosis today. And that led to the announcement from Buckingham Palace that he was going to undergo a procedure next week. Now, it's not ideal, is it, for them to have to make two major announcements about uh, the most senior member of the royal family and the second most senior female uh, member mm. of the royal family within an hour and a half of each other. Now, Buckingham Palace stressing that what the king is to undergo next week is very much routine. It is something that many, many men of his age will undergo and he will uh, undergo it for a short period of time. He'll have a short period of recuperation where engagements will be cancelled. But because of his symptoms, he's actually had to cancel engagements that were due to play take place tomorrow and Friday. A much more serious uh, case for the Princess of Wales because while this was planned surgery and we're told it was successful, a 10 to 14 day stay in hospital followed by two to three months of recuperation tells us that this was major surgery uh, for the Princess of Wales. And we've got the Prince of Wales, William, her husband, also now cancelling engagements and taking time off work to be at his wife's side and also looking after their three young children. So uh, a significant impact on the royal family and their ability to go about their duties. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just turn to, to Dr Mark Siegel. From a medical perspective, Charles is obviously a more straightforward situation. He's a man in his 70s. He's got an enlarged prostate. That's not an uncommon condition for men of that age. But the procedure itself, he is the monarch. Um, will he be put under for this and what will happen? Absolutely. And uh, by the way, Sarah said it, it, it might have happened precipitously. What usually happens is the symptoms accrue over many months or years, over the age of 70. Eighty percent of men have enlarged prostates. They don't all need procedures. But when the medications fail and it's not stopping it so that you get an easy flow, you have a procedure. And it's all about urine flow with an enlarged prostate. Exactly. And if, if it doesn't, you, if you if you if it suspended the flow or it interferes with the flow, you may have a procedure. Usually these days, peers, we're using a green laser, mm -hmm. which actually is is quite a, a small way to go about it. It's not a big open procedure. It's it's through the urethra, but it, 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 as Sarah just said, it can work and be you're done with it in an hour. Maybe you're home the next day. To your point, though, it is done on, under general anesthesia, right. generally propofol, which everybody's heard about. That's the Michael Jackson drug. We use that for colonoscopy for any procedure, yeah. but also ketamine. So ketamine, propofol plus ketamine is the usual. We're going to have King Charles in ketamine storm. Is that the headline next? I hope not. <laughs> but he, he will probably go. Why, why ketamine? What does well, that? Because do? it puts you under more. Pro, right. Propofol is is just. A, a milder, lighter anesthesia. But again, this is an actual procedure. I thought you're, ketamine you're, was an elephant tranquilizer. Initially, absolutely. You, you have that right. Back in the 70s, that's what they started for. You're ev literally evaporating part of the prostate with this, the, right. the front part that's pinching on the urethra. You're literally using the laser to evaporate it. And if you, come, don't, if, you don't, if you don't have that procedure, what happens ultimately? Well, after a while, the medications fail, and you would have to have an open procedure, which, again, is the old scalpel method. We're, we're through with that now. This is, this is a miracle fo step forward. Will it have any side effects going forward after he's had the procedure? For a few days after, you might have some burning when you urinate, some hesitancy when you urinate, a little bit of pain, but then it gradually responds over a few days, not like what we're hearing for the princess.
Right, so this looks altogether more serious, and the fact we're not being told what it is suggests there's something more serious going on. For someone of 42 and otherwise in very good health, to be in hospital for up to two weeks and then have basically three months off work, what does that tell you this might be? I'm concerned about this. Uh, I, I like the point that Sarah just made, that it was planned, but what does planned mean? I believe them when they say it's not cancer, so that's a very, very good point. Could it be a benign tumor? Could it be a hernia? Could it be a, a gynecological procedure? Could it be related to... She had three children in five years, which is a lot, but she was out there saying, I used hypnotherapy for this. So now she's, she's re relying on privacy, and that makes me concerned. But, peers, almost every single abdominal surgery I can think of that's not an emergency is done through a scope these days or a robot, and you're home in a day. So I'm concerned... So what, what, what could it be? I think something might have gone wrong. I'm worried about a complication. I'm worried about an infection. You know, she went in there, maybe something happened she wasn't anticipating, and two to three months of recovery implies that there's been something major here. So it may not have been a planned major surgery, but how do we know an infection didn't occur? How do we know a complication didn't occur? She's going to be fine. I have a strong feeling she'll be fine, but the longer-term recovery concerns me that something went wrong. Uh, Sarah, where does this leave us? If King Charles is unconscious and William is, you know, looking after his kids and, I mean, do we start heading down the list of people if there's some a duty that the monarch has to perform? What actually happens here? We're kind of into uncharted territory a bit. Well, look, there's a very set procedure in place should a monarch be incapacitated due to ill health for a short period of time. And, and if the king does have to undergo a general anaesthetic and is unconscious, then the councillors of state would be called upon should they be needed. Now, the list of the councillors of state is the, the monarch's spouse, so Camilla, and the next four in line to the throne traditionally. Now, that list throws up a few problems, as you've alluded to there, Piers, because it's the Prince of Wales, who we know is looking after his wife and children. Then it's Prince Harry, who's in California. The next on the list, oh my God. the Duke of York. He's going to be... He won't be interim king, will he? No, he With won't. Queen the Meghan. Duke of York, Princess Beatrice. He'll stay here. <laughs> but in planning for an occasion like this, uh, the royal family decided that it might be pertinent to add a couple more onto the mm. list. So we now have uh, the Princess Royal, who is also a councillor of state, and the Duke of Edinburgh. So should they be required, they could be called on. But I think it's highly likely that the King will only be out of action for a very short period of time. And while he's not mm. conducting public duties, he'll still be receiving his red boxes. He'll still be able to make decisions uh, as and when they're required. Okay.